Good morning, Jim Hodges here, Annie here. Annie is a six month old golden doodle, came in for our residency training program. Very sweet, affectionate girl, a lot of energy, and that's probably one of the things that we need to work on. Not to take away that energy, but to modify it and control it. Uh, she loves people, she loves animals, she loves everything, okay? And with that love and energy, she wants to greet them. With a puppy or a dog, she wants to maybe jump out of our leash. With people, she wants to jump on them. We have to get in front of that and show her that she can't pull on the leash. She can't jump. And that just takes repetition. A way that we start to teach that, and that's one of the things that we address with our residencies, is obedience. Obedience allows us to communicate with her in that instant of time if she did something right or wrong. If it's right, we praise it. If it's wrong, we bite it and then provide like praise behind it. And as we do that in the moment, black and white scenarios, we can start to address behaviors in the moment. If it's something we like, we praise it, we name it. If it's something we don't like, it, we bite it. And then we come back and praise when she's doing what we ask. So those are the things we have to do with behavior. I'm going to go through the obedience right now on leash. Listen to my voice. Uh, watch what I do if she doesn't obey me, okay? There's no perfect being to ever walk this earth but one person. It's not us, it's not you, it's not anyone out there watching this right now. So we're going to make mistakes, but we learn from them and try not to repeat them so that she grows to be a great family member. And I know she's going to do that if you'll just become a leader and provide those boundaries and structure. You ready, sweetheart? Let's go. So let's go as our loose lease walk, okay? Uh, as I've said before, I like to have her, my hand right here by my side with a loose leash. Good girl. So I'm praising her because she's sitting right here and watching. So when we start to walk, we're right here. One day you can give her as much leash as you want. But right now, let's go. Come on. I want her by my side. The reason I want her by my side is so that she knows I'm in control, that I'm the authority figure in her life. I can turn around, turn here, turn there, and in the beginning I may like to make a lot of these turns, but basically I want her to walk with me. If uh, she starts to get out in front or goes off to the side or smells the ground, I'm going to tap the leash to my side, okay? So if it's in front, I'm going to tash, tack, tap it back. It's okay, sweetheart. I'm going to tap back. If she goes that way, I'm going to tap here. If she starts to smell the ground, I'm just going to tap up lightly. When I tap, I'm going to tell her no. And then normally I'm going to say no, let's go, and then good girl again. Let's go. She's really good on her walk, but she is going to test you, I know, especially when she sees other animals or other people. And we have to address that. So we have the let's go. Sit. Girl. Sit means sit. When we ask her to sit, she has to sit. She has to hold it, okay? If she didn't sit then, it would be no sit. If uh, she got up, it would be no sit. My tap would be straight up above her head, okay? And then I always come back and praise afterwards. Great. The hand signal for SIT. Good girl. It's just like that, all right? Good. And she has to hold it. We don't have to stand there with her. Now, one of the things that I don't like to do is keep my dogs in a sit for a long, long time. If I want them to be in one position for a while, I'll either put them in a down or I'll break. But good girl, good girl. Back on around here. So when I broke her, and this would be something that I would do is if I, if I approach someone out walking, I might have her SIT for a second, then I'll break her. And guess what? She can't pull me on a leash ever again. So I have her right by my side while I'm having a conversation. I worry about dogs' hips. That's why I don't keep them in that sit for more than a minute max in most cases, okay? But rest assured, hand signal like this, sit. The girl, she was already in the sit. And, and now she wants to sit for a couple minutes, that's up to her, okay? And then uh, if she doesn't sit, it's a tap up. If she gets up, it's a tap up. With a tap, we say no, repeat the command, and then praise. The next thing that I'll do is break. Break is my release command. When I break her, I usually step away. You notice how she got up and came to me. I'm a pet or lover. Might even give her a treat, uh, even though it's not something that you have to do in general. Good girl. See how she keeps following me? I want to praise her. What I'm doing 
is subliminally teaching her that I'm the center of the universe, that it's great to be around me. Good things happen when you're around me. That's what I want to happen for you, okay? So down, hand signal from the side is down. Now, when I tell her to down, she must down. If she doesn't do it, I would tap the leash just like that. No, down, good girl. When I tell her down, she's not supposed to smell the ground. She likes to try to smell the ground. I would bite her for that, okay? That's why I alluded to it with the walk as well. When we're walking, she wants to smell. Good girl. So she did exactly what I wanted. Now, the other part of the down is stay. Now I told her to stay. She can relax. She's going to be there a while. She doesn't have to pay attention to me. When I tell a dog stay, I normally do it for at least two minutes at a time, normally five or ten. And I don't do stay forever with a dog unless I see the need. The primary function of down and down stay is to teach that I'm the leader, okay, to let her know that I control all the shots. The down is the most submissive command for the vast majority of dogs out there. And when you can have them down and hold it, they're basically submitting to you as their leader which is a good thing. We always want to keep level-headed, emotionally level. We don't want to get mad at our dog. If they do something wrong, we just address it in a calm way uh, and know at the moment, and then a like praise afterwards. So I'm not going to keep her in that down for two minutes, but that's what the stay is. We can use that stay, open palm in front, in a room in a house. We can walk out of a room, and if we start to walk out of the room, we say, stay, okay? In the beginning, we would have the leash on her. We walk out. If she stays in the room, we come back. We tell her how good she is. We pet her. We praise her verbally. We may give her a treat, and we reward her that she stayed. If she came through that door and followed us, we would take the leash or take the tab and take her back to that room. No, 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 no. Stay good girl and we'd immediately walk right back out of the room. That's how she's going to learn that she needs to stay in a room or not bolt out a front door if you will. Okay? Let's go. Good girl. So we did the down from the side. Good. Sit. Good girl. Down. Now that's down from in front. Okay? Same rules with down from the side. It's just we did it in a different place. If you notice, I downed her while she was standing there uh, when we were walking. She can down from a sit, from a from a walking or what have you. Come. Good girl. So one more time. Down. From in front. And a girl. Break. Good girl. Good girl. So I actually started the C-O-M-E command, and we're going to talk about that. We have an on-leash come and an off-leash come. The on-leash come helps to teach what we want off-leash. But typically when we do the on-leash come, and you're going to see it a little bit more detail in just a second, we ask our dog to come. If she doesn't come, we would tap the girl. We would tap the leash towards us, tell her no come, she's to come and sit. Off-leash, at least in the beginning, we're not going to tell her to come. We're going to get her attention, okay? We're going to go, Annie, Annie, what you doing? Hey, baby, look what I got right here. Come. Now, if you'll go back and watch the video, good girl, break. Uh, I didn't tell her to come till she was committed to coming to me. Pretend like that was off leash, outside in the backyard, uh, in the house, and she's at one end of the house, you're at the other. Get her attention. When she's committed to coming to you, and not until, that's when you tell her to come. If she's in uh, outside and she sees a cat or another dog, and you just command her to come, and she doesn't come, she just learned that she doesn't have to obey you every time, especially when she's 10, 20, 30 feet away. Good girl, that was very good. Of course, you see her wagging her tail. She really likes uh, Salem here. But she did good. She was checking out, but she didn't try to pounce because we're learning how to work and react with other animals. Let's go. So the come off leash, we call her name, get her attention. When she comes, we pay her off with words, praise, okay, touch. And girl, here, come. And tree. 
all at the same time. Good girl. Great. You also notice that I was backing up. We can do that on leash or off leash, and that usually helps to uh, enhance their desire to come to us. Hand signal on leash. Come on, sweetie. Sit. Again, hand signal set. She has to hold it. And I think I'll give her a treat now. Come. She comes, she sits. Good girl. Good girl. And she holds the sit after the come. Break. Now, off leash, I don't care if uh, you have her sit or not. That's entirely up to you. But the one thing I want you to do for the next two, three hundred times off leash is have a treat or a toy, something that really excites her. And when we do it off leash, I always want the treat or toy right here. I don't want it here. But when we get here and she sees a dog or something, she may run right past it. Here, she's focused completely on us. Let's go. Good girl. So the next thing is the PLACE command. Place. Place, of course, she can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what she does as long as she stays on the bed. She's very good at this. Uh, one of the things that you wanted was to be able to put her in a place whenever you ate dinner. You're going to be able to do that. Of course, know that when you first go home, she's going to test you. Dogs learn in environments. And when the environment changes, like with a cat, is one room, another room, more people involved, they tend to revert back to what they had previously learned until we show them the right way. Again, she can do this for a couple of hours easy, and she'll hold it. You just drop the leash, you move around, but in the beginning, the leash has to stay on her, okay? And when it stays on her, that's for when she gets up. If she gets up, you just pick up the leash. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Place. So when I tap that leash on the place, it's right back to the center of the bed. And then we always come back and give a little bit of praise. Good girl. And she's there. I love the place command because the place command means even after you've had a hard, long day at work, you can put her in a command and relax yourself, but still assert that leadership that you need. Great. Let's go. Obedience, when we're doing obedience now and, and in the future, doesn't have to be 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time, although I do want you, typically when a dog goes home for a while, to work 10, 15 minutes inside once a day, 10, 15 minutes outside. But real obedience, real real life dog training, real leadership takes place when you do obedience in five seconds, 15, 30 second intervals, okay? Good girl. Yes. Good girl, Salem. I love Salem. She's been with us uh, right at around 23 years now. And I don't know how much longer she has, but she loves to be with people and loves to be with dogs as long as those dogs are with people, unfortunately. She's a people cat. Let's go. All right, so the next thing that we've got is, is loading up or getting into the car. I believe this is a great command to teach a dog uh, to get in our vehicle without them running and jumping without us asking. In most cases, most of the time when I get a dog, they approach the door, they just hop in. We don't want that to happen. We want her to load up on command, and we don't want her to just bust a gut to get inside. So we would walk her up, that baby stay sit, and then look. The hand signal's the same as the place. I pointed at it. Good girl. Right. Or let's go, or any other command that we want. Okay? And that's all we do. We teach her to load up. When we do load a dog up into a car, I do not tell them to sit her down. What command do you think I use? The place command. So when we give them the place command, we know they can lay down, sit down, stand up. We don't care as long as they stay there. Lay a blanket out on, a, on your seat or in the back. Tell her to place. If they start to get off or try to move up front, no, no, place. You ready, sweetheart? Next command, last command that we're going to work on today is the heel command. The heel command is when we've got a box right here beside us. Good girl. And uh, our job is to keep her in that box. Her job is to stay in that box, okay? I don't use the heel command except for when maybe there's a lot of traffic, if I'm at a pet store or something. I want, and she did not break this command. Notice, if you'll go back and play, I didn't have her in a command. 
I was exercising the same belief I was pointing out earlier to you. We don't put her in a sit and make her hold it for a while. But we're at a store or something like that, there's a lot of traffic, we want to keep her tight. That's what that heel command is, okay? When we walk, her job is to stay here, our job is to keep her there. If I step off, hopefully she's going to follow through with me, okay? I do my best not to stop in the middle of a turn or jump stop because she's having to watch what I do, okay? And especially in the beginning, if I do a jump stop, she may shoot right past us. We give her a chance to react to us. You ready, sweetheart? Now, normally I'll have them start in a sit, but it doesn't matter. She can be standing, she can be laid down. We start to tell her to heal. Hand signal is like this. You ready, sweetheart? Heal. So she's got to get up. She came right into my side. Watch when I turn. See how she came right back in? I stop. She hopefully will sit automatically. No sit. Good. Now, she sat back a little bit. First of all, we had a little mistake, and I'm going to talk about that but she sat back a little bit. That's something that we want to address the best we can. Golden Doodles and Poodles, especially when they have hair in their eyes, they have to sit back so they can see you a little bit better. So we're gonna go back to the heel again. Heel. Come on, baby, heel. Good girl. I should be able to step off and she holds it. We're gonna come back and do it again. Heel. Come on, baby. Step off, good girl. Good girl. Again, step off, I can come in down and put her in the down. And she has to hold the down. She's in the down until I release her. She popped up, remember what the bite would be. Good girl. Good girl. Right, let's go. Walk her by our kitty cat. Good girl. I'm proud of you. Yes, ma'am. Turn back around. Let's go back over here. So, basically, that's how we're going to work with Annie. You know, we want to be the leader. We never give a command unless we know she's going to do it or we're in a position to make her do it. When she does it, we're going to praise her. We're going to praise her with words and touch, an occasional treat, if you want. Except on the comb, we want to use a lot of treats right now. Especially if it motivates a dog. If, if a good girl, if a dog doesn't like treats, then we're just going to use a lot of praise and maybe even try a toy if we will. Uh, we want to let her know that we're happy. We want to build a relationship together. Okay? So say what you mean, mean what you say. If you don't mean it, don't say it. If she's off leash in the house, don't give her a command unless you know she's going to do it or you're in a position to make her do it. Okay? Of course, you can get me, 336-945-3232, 336-945-3232. Uh, Jim Hodges, dogtraining.com, website is being redesigned right now. Uh, sales at Jim Hodges, dogtraining.com, email, facebook.com, Jim Hodges, dog training. Thank you so much. If we ever need a follow-up, just give me a call. Uh, I'm here for you. There's no charge for follow-ups. I wish you guys a wonderful life together. I think she's going to be a, a great companion for you. Thank you so much. God bless. Break it.